Yeah, I'm glad you said um, what makes it relatable because I was like, I, I don't know if it's so auth unique as much as it's just honest and out there. If that's so that might be the most unique piece is that I do try to put, I don't know, it not, I don't know why Kim Kardashian came in my head. Because Kim's, that to me, that's like fake authenticity. Like, it's just trying to be genuine. Um, I don't try to overpromise. Um, I don't try to, you know, set low expectations, then over deliver just to wow you. I try to be quality, um, sometimes quality over quantity. And what I do, and that really brings me to being being able to say this is just how I've spent my days. This is how I've spent my hours. This has been the reality of the years I've had. Um, and it's not about however 30 some years I've, you know, been here on the earth, but it's really about the quality of each of those moments and the moments that were terrible and the moments that were great and everything in between. So I think the uniqueness is really just coming out of the fact that, um, I am getting more comfortable to say what it is, but that's because it's just like, why are we hiding what really happens? Um, if we're going to get to solutions, I don't know. Like, I don't know why it's in my head right now. I've never thought of it this way, but like if you make a cookie recipe and the cookie sucks, you just throw the cookie away or do you look back at the recipe and go, what, what didn't work? Did I follow something? Or if the cookie, you do it exactly right. And then the cookie's like, it could be better. I could make this better. Then you adjust the recipe and you add something to it. And so I think if you're not sitting back and looking at what you're doing and seeing what you missed or what you could add um, and you don't see yourself as somebody that if you're in that thought process of identifying what's missing or what's being added and you can see those things and you're not telling anybody about it, light the firecracker under your booty and find someone to go tell them because that's an amazing skill set to fill the void. And even if you think someone else has my chance, like chances are they haven't figured it out with your lived experiences and your unique story. Like, come bring it, like throw it out on the table. Let's see where and how it evolves what we're currently doing and how we can make it better. So I think that's where there's, there's so much relatability to all of us are experiencing things and looking back and going, what did I miss? Or what did we collectively miss? Or how the heck do we make it better? So throw the ideas out there. And if you start to feel really, really passionate about one thing versus another, do the risk and reward. Go talk to other people because it doesn't even have to be through starting a business. It doesn't have to be through those things. It can just be through your own organizations, your own interactions that you just take on a new, not a new, but it's an enhanced way of, of operating, you know, like I'm just finding a new way to operate. And the, the way I'm operating now is a heck of a lot more efficient than I was doing it before but I still was a mom who was feeding my kids and trying to get work and pay the bills and try to talk to my friends. And I was still doing that, but I was also operating in a way that wasn't going to then let things be more enjoyable. And that's really what I've done is I've just changed my operational procedures and, and found a way to enhance. And my experiences, I don't think are, are that unique. I think that's one of the things that I've unfortunately discovered by being open. Um, it's a, it's a fortunate, but unfortunate is that the, the trauma club is so, so big. And that's what, you know, there's, there's not really typically a week or so that goes by where somebody else doesn't say, Hey, I just either I I've had something similar or a sibling or a friend or a child or a parent had something kind of similar to your story, or I'm just a victim of, of abuse. And you know, how that conversation goes, that doesn't really happen without a week, but the thing I'll say to them is I hate to tell you this. You're a part of a huge club, but I also want you to know you're a part of a huge club, which means there's a lot of us out there that can support and give you resources and be there for you during the worst of the days, the best of the days and everything in between. Um, so for what's unique is really not that unique, which is sad and, and scary, but also um, sometimes reassuring that I'm not as unique as I thought I was several years ago before I let everybody know what happened to me. Um, but then at the same time, I think there's, there's a relatability just because, 
who you get on this podcast is who you're going to get if I'm coaching you or I meet you at the bar at, you know, I, I would say 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I'm old now, so it's like probably like 630. You know, I'll see you at the bar for like the, the early drink specials and then I'm out um, because I get tired. But I mean, those are the realities is that I don't want to live and try to fake it anymore in any other spaces that I've just made that decision is that I'm tired of trying to go in and be something I'm not because that hasn't got me anywhere. I got a lot further actually being myself um, with all the ums and huh and awkwardness that I believe I bring. It's still just, that's the unique part. Maybe it's just how I, I put it out in the world. So 